Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India William Blake is a great poet of England. He was a strange poet, born in 1751 and he came into the early 19th century, lived along with Coleridge and Wordsworth, contributed to this romantic movement right from late 18th century. But we bring him here along with pre-romantic poets just for convenience. We have to be aware that William Blake is considered the first or the most important romantic poet today. First, we look into the historical and literary context, see a few ideas about Blake, particularly his views on imagination and then read two poems from Songs of Innocence and two poems from Songs of Experience. But interestingly, the title is the same, Nurse's Song and the Chimney Sweeper. We will do the analysis. As we said earlier, Blake is a pre-romantic poet and also a romantic poet. He is pre-romantic in time, that is he started his writing career in late 18th century but he lived on into the uh, 19th century, he had that first romantic urge or spirit. He lived as you can see during this period of King George III and he witnessed or he heard about this American Revolution, French Revolution, Garden Riots in London in 1780. He was a witness to many other social uh, happenings, social events, political events of his time. Unlike many other writers, he was a man who observed life very closely. He saw the pathetic conditions of life in England. He also saw the divide between the rich and the poor. That is why he observed people living in slums, particularly prostitutes and children in child labor and the moral depravity of the people. He was too much concerned with all these negative aspects of life that he observed. And during this time only we have this lyrical ballads being published by Wordsworth and Coleridge. So, we come right up to the end of pre-romantic period and the beginning of romantic period. Instead of looking into his life, we see something more interesting. Blake was a poet of intellect and imagination. So, many 20th century critics spent their scholarly attention on William Blake and that is why Blake became something like a critical fuel for scholars like Marx Scorer, Northrop Fry and Harold Bloom, many others. A number of PhDs were written, number of books were written, number of articles were written on William Blake to revive him as one of the most significant poets of England. In his own lifetime, he was neglected, he was not at all uh, seriously paid attention. He, however, he had such a talent, he was a multi uh, talented person, he was a poet, engraver, printer and a system builder. And personally for me, this one sentence is very interesting, I hope many of you will like it. He was a, st a staunch proponent of this individualism, this quotation will tell you about that. I must create a system or be enslaved by another man's. So, he was concerned with freedom and slavery all through his life. Imagination gave him that freedom, originality gave him that freedom, but the established society did not allow him or others to use their own imagination. We have many poems from this songs of innocence and uh, experience, these two are very well known the lamb from innocence and the tiger from experience. We have also another example from auguries of innocence here. 
this is again particularly uh, noted for its uh, wisdom. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. These four lines will reveal to us the major concern of Blake as a poet of nature, as a poet of imagination. At the same time, even though he was concerned with some metaphysical or philosophical ideas connecting this world to see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower, infinity and eternity in his palm in an hour. Though he was doing all these things, he was observant, he was closely watching his surroundings. That is why we have some poems with excellent social consciousness. Blake is synonymous with imagination. That is why we have this passage here. He wrote a letter to one Reverend John Tressler when the latter gave him some assignment of printing illustration and all that. He was a specialized printer and illustrator and engraver. So, some patrons used to give him some work. So, he wrote like this about imagination. I feel that a man may be happy in this world and I know that this world is a world of imagination and vision. I see everything I paint in this world, but everybody does not see alike. Some see nature all ridicule and deformity and by these I shall not regulate my proportions and some scarce see nature at all. But to the eyes of the man of imagination, nature is imagination itself. As a man is, so he sees. You certainly mistake when you say that the vision of fancy are not to be found in this world. To me, this world is all one continued vision of fancy or imagination. A poet, a profound poet concerned with imagination, seeing imagination in nature, seeing vision everywhere. At times, he was considered a mad poet. He did not care for the world, he cared for his art today we care for him. This is a collection of poem called Songs of Innocence and Experience. It has a subtitle showing the two contrary states of the human soul. Duality is a fact of life. So, in the first volume of Songs of Innocence, he published 19 poems dealing with innocence, childhood, harmony, beauty, freedom, motion, liveliness. And in the second volume, he had 28 poems dealing with experience, adulthood, discard, ugliness, repression, stillness and chillness. He published all these poems together in single volume later in 1794. We have chosen four poems actually with the same title, Nurse's Song two poems and another one the chimney sweeper the same title but two poems one in innocence another in experience so the song the poem called nurse's song in innocence published in 1789 has four stanzas or quatrains because we have four lines first let's see this and then see the poem on nurse's song in experience and then we will move to the chimney sweeper. When the voices of children are heard on the green and laughing is heard on the hill, my heart is at rest within my breast and everything else is still. Then come home my children, the sun is gone down and the dews of night arise. Come, come leave off play and let us away till the morning appears in the skies. Next two stanzas of the same poem, Nurse's Song from Innocence. No, no, let us play for it is yet day and we cannot go to sleep. Besides, in the sky the little birds fly and the hills are all covered with sheep. Well, well, go and play till the light fades away and then go home to bed. The little ones leaped and shouted and laughed and all the hills echoed. When we come to the same poem called Nurse's Song in Experience, we find that the four stanzas have been reduced to two stanzas. There is something interesting about this movement from innocence to experience. 
there is a kind of reduction in expression though experience is increasing. Let us read when the voices of children are heard on the green and whisperings are in the dale, the days of my youth rise fresh in my mind, my face turns green and pale. Then come home my children, the sun is gone down and the dews of night arise, your spring and your day are wasted in play and your winter and night in disguise. The same poem, the same speaker probably and the similar children, the similar environment, but the speaker, the narrator has gained in experience. Let us analyze the poem. The thematic contrast is very interesting. In innocence, in the first four stanzas, we have the contrast between children and adults, laughter and cry, rest and work or play, day and night, nature and humans. We also have light and darkness. When it comes to experience, the expression is reduced, so the contrast is also less. There is an element of comparison between youth and adult, gay and pale, productive work and wasteful play. We have spring and winter as well, but then we see the contrast is very clear. The play is considered to be wasteful, so there is an element of anxiety about the future. Blake's poem has a number of poetic devices. Nurse's song in, a, in, in the volume Innocence, we call it Innocent Song, has alliteration, assonance, anaphora, polysyndeton. We have this example of herd and hill in line number 2 for alliteration. Everything else is still in line number 4 for assonance and is repeated several times in seven lines actually. Seven lines begin with and, so that is an example of anaphora and we have the case of polysyndeton that is the same and is used four times. Alliteration is very strong in this one line 15 where we find the liveliness of the children. The little ones leaped and shouted and laughed. The syntax is also very interesting to note. First stanza begins with when and then the second stanza begin with then. Then the third one we have no, no, then the fourth stanza with well, well. So there is a kind of continuity, there is a kind of harmony in this uh, four stanzas. When we come to the experience song, we find anaphora and polysyndeton being reduced. We have three ands for anaphora and three ands for polysyndeton. We also have assonance in night arise. The rhyme, rhythm and meter all are also interesting to notice in these two poems with the same title, one in innocence, another in experience. We have four stanzas in essence and two stanzas in experience. We have the same irregular line pattern. We have some occasional end rhymes in both. In the case of the first poem, we have the sweet tone and joyful atmosphere, but in the case of the second poem, the tone is a little harsh and atmosphere is anxious. The number of syllables varies from 6 to 12 suggesting trimeter and hexameter in innocent songs. The same thing happens in uh, the experience song as well. We have iambic rhythm and occasional trochee and spondy in the nurse's song innocence. Similarly, we have iambic rhythm with occasional trochee and spondy in uh, nurse's song in experience. On the whole, we can say the four stanzas of the innocent song give a pleasant picture of the scene, children laughing, leaping and playing. The nurse takes care of the children casually without worry as the children have some freedom to play a little longer than expected. The two stanzas of the experience song reveal a contrasting picture of nostalgia and concern for the children. Here the nurse tends to chide the children for wasting the time as the winter of suffering is already foreshadowed in spring. That is get ready for life, do not waste time. That is the voice of adults. 
but the children's voice is different. Now, let us move to the next poem the chimney sweeper from these two volumes from innocence and from experience. We have six tenses for the first one, so let us read them. When my mother died I was very young and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry weep, 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 weep. So, your chimneys I sweep and in suit I sleep. There is little Tom Dacker who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved. So, I said hush Tom never mind it for when your head is bare you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. And so, he was quiet and that very night as Tom was sleeping he had such a sight that thousands of sweepers Dick, Joe, Ned and Jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and set them all free. Then down a green plain leaping laughing they run and wash in a river and shine in the sun. Then naked and white all their bags left behind they rise upon the clouds and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom if he would be a good boy he would have God for his father and never want joy. And so, Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So, if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. This is the first poem from Innocence on the title the chimney sweeper. Now, we move to the second poem in experience volume. There are three stanzas again like the nurse's song the number of stanzas reduced to half from 4 to 2 now from 6 to 3. A little black thing among the snow crying weep weep in notes of woe where are they father and mother say they are both gone up to the church to pray. Because I was happy upon the heath and smiled among the winter snow they clothed me in the clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. And because I am happy and dance and sing they think they have done me no injury and are gone to praise God and his priest and king who make up a heaven of our misery. The thematic contrast between these two poems or within these poems point to a number of binaries. We have children and parents life and death laughter and cry comfort and discomfort angel and devil white and black good and bad day and night God and humans light and darkness cold and warm in the innocent song. And we have on the other hand black and white cry and laughter parents and children oh and comfort church and family sad and happy hell and heaven society and individual religion and man. This is a poem which illustrates Blake's challenge to the established authority of the church of his time. He did not believe in the church, he did not believe in God as propagated by the church. The religion of man was something different that is the religion of imagination for Blake. You could see the child labor that was described in the poem. Chimney sweepers, they were sent up the chimney in those days. If you read up a little about the social history of England at the time you would understand small children were sent up the chimney to clean the dark suit. A number of poetic devices are found in both poems alliteration we have examples like sweep suit, suit spoil, leaping laughing, bags behind, bags brushes. We also have a simile like a lamb's back. Metaphor is something very strong locked up in coffins of black. The children death and darkness or this blackness they are all connected symbolically. So, the children are locked up in the coffin that means they are dead even before they grow up. Many children used to die, many used, children used to lose their limbs because they would fall from the chimney. There is an interesting case of a dream experience there is a story of this angel coming into the dream of a child saying be a good child God will be your father. Because as we saw in the next poem 
parents forget the children they go to church they pray to god they pray to they do their service to the king church and state they don't care for the children there is obviously the sentence structure is very complex there is also a conditional clause if you behave well if you do your duty god will take care of you we human beings will not take care of you that is a kind of practical truth that blake con conveys in this poem the experience song has one poetic device called reification that is objectification it's a very strong phrase a little black thing the child it is not a child it's it's a ball of black thing it is used to remove black things in the chimney rhyme rhythm and meter point to certain interesting things we can see we have this rhyme scheme of a a b b in the six stanzas similarly in the three stanzas in experience we have full rhymes young tongue head said bear hair night sight run sun boy joy warm home we don't have such full rhymes here in this experience song because there is more discard we have partial rhyme dark and work i rhyme like behind and when perfect rhyme like weep and sleep that is be perfect because that is the only suffering that the children are familiar with jack and black also jack is black jack is black is death for the children we have internal rhyme like sweep and sleep in the case of this experience song we have full rhymes in two cases feminine rhyme we have injury and misery because they have double syllables we have i rhyme like heat and death some internal rhyme also we have note of woe or notes of woe that's what we find we have some repetitions of words like weep snow cloth sing happy because notes of woe to summarize the poem with an overall impression we have these things to say the first speaker of the innocent song believes in the received wisdom from society about religion god angels humans and so accepts the human condition stoically patiently the speaker further blindly accept the story of the angel freeing the chimney sweepers after death and the statement about doing duty sincerely but this will not bring any harm to children that's what the angel says the first person speaker of the experience song is aware of the deceptive phase of religion as he exposes the irresponsibility of the church and the state toward the poor people because both church and king are brought into this poem here the speaker pretends to be happy while actually inhabiting a heaven of our misery the two poems together on child labor reveal blake's challenge to the established views of his day many questions were discussed raised in the parliament but the children's plight did not find a place it took long time for these children to be freed from this kind of slavery some references we have hope these are useful to you you will learn more about blake and his poetry thank you